Well, good morning, everyone. I don't know don't know why I do these introductions on a first thing in the morning and look red-eyed and blurry-eyed, but here we are in front of the Astra again. Um, I'm kind of doing this out of sequence, just introducing this video, which is the Supercharger install. Um, we're already halfway through it, basically, but you'll, you'll get caught up in a minute. <clears throat> um, the car did pass its MOT fine on Monday, so I drove it around a little bit. And that was nice just to drive it again um, but yeah now we're actually into the supercharger install this video is pretty long longer than my usual videos you know I'm trying to cover the installation as much as I can because you know I would have appreciated a video like this if it existed uh, I haven't seen one like this so although I can't cover everything because some of the work like the electrical looms were already done for me you know, I'm trying to cover off um, as much as I can in all other areas of what's involved in the supercharger install. So without further ado, let's get cracking into that. And we're going to start with the fuel pump installation, I think. So get yourself a cup of tea, settle in. Uh, I will try and put some um, timeline sort of thing in the description below so that you can, if you want to jump around to the interesting bits, then you can do that. So. Anyway, thanks for watching. Let's get going. All right, so that is the new pump in place. Sorry if I'm shaking. Got the new pump in place. I did have to kind of break that, uh, whatever you call it, clip on the end of the pipe. So we've used a Jubilee and that's not going anywhere. I've tried pulling it off and it's not going to come off. So that's good. So yeah, just reseated that pump in there. Fairly nice and easy. There's like four clips that you just uh, separate and pull out the other pump, slot this one back in until it clips in, rejoin that pipe, rejoin the little uh, sensor switch, this blue and uh, brown wire, and refit the um, the tank seal, so all good. Okay, so quick test, Let's see if the fuel pump still works okay. I could hear it prime I think. A little bit of noise from back there. See if we can hear it running. Sounds like it. Okay, well that's good news. Right, so this is a little quick throw it in there, see if there's room kind of test. So this is the new uh, cooler for the supercharger. And as you can see behind the standard bumper, um, with no air red, with no air con radiator, it sits in there quite nicely. So what we're going to need to do is these two mounting points on the cooler we can pick up off the crash bar here. So I need a couple of probably steel brackets so that they don't flap around. And we can screw them onto the crash bar. That'll come along and meet up with these uh, mounting points there. That should hold it in place <clears throat> without too much problems. And then we've got clearance either side for the pipe work. So that's a good result. We can get that mounted up. All good. Okay, so this is a Thursday evening. I've decided that this is the time to start. I've got pretty much everything I need. Uh, there might be one pipe that's arrived in the wrong size, but we can always use an old one for now if we need to. So I literally drained the coolant, as you can see, by the mess on the floor. And we're going to pull the front out. We're going to get the radiator out of the way. So I've just got a nice bit of room to work with. And obviously I can pull this part off as well after my adaption. Um, so yeah, I'm going to get cracking and I'll just take you step by step. Basically this step is to remove everything that we don't need uh, anymore. So you'll probably catch me when all of that stuff is out the way and we would be ready to put other things in. I am going to change the spark plugs. Um, I didn't mention them, but, or maybe I did. 
So the spark plugs are going in. I had to gap them to 0.7 mil, I think. That's what it says from Courtney Sport. So that's what I've done. So we're going to drop those in. Um, but yeah, pretty much everything else you'll see as we go along. All right, check back in a bit. Okay, so it's about an hour and a half, maybe two hours later, and we've got to this stage. Battery trays all out, radiators out, um, inlet manifold is out. Um, so we're doing good, we're doing good. Found a few loose bolts, which is my bad, obviously. So we're going to be dealing with those as we rebuild. But anyway, one point I'm going to make is about this tensioner down here. Now, when the engine is out of the car, you can there, there is a point. There's like a little arrow somewhere. I can't really see it now. So what I'm going to do is measure a point on the tensioner to some bracket somewhere. And then I'll know when I've got the new belt on whether or not the tensioner is in the right place. And hopefully that will mean that I've got a good tension back. So that's my theory. Correct me if I'm wrong, but that's what I'm going with. So... The point that I'm going to measure is this flat edge up to, I don't know, I'm going to pick a point, a nice sharp corner, probably that thing there, and I'm going to say that that is, <laughs> it's in inches because of the way my ruler is. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So four inch and seven eighths to that corner, if you like. You can see it. Four inch and seven eighths. We'll do that. Okay, so that was just a little tip. Right, my next job is to just detension the belt. So I bought one of these fairly slimline uh, ratchets. And once I've got that popped in there, that should give me leverage on the tensioner to get the belt off. When I was reading up about supercharger conversions, one of the things that always a little bit confused me was what you actually do with the alternator. As we said before, the, the space uh, of the inlet manifold against the alternator is restricted now. Um, and so what we do is we remove the cover and shorten the studs. So what is the process required for that? Well. If you look here, uh, this is one that was used on a supercharger conversion. This is the one off my car that was brand new fitted. So it's a case of um, taking off two nuts that are on these two studs and one Phillips screw from the top there. And that means that the plastic cover can then lift off like so. And there's not really a lot to this, nothing in this cover really, it just transfers um, from a bolt on the outside there to a bolt there. So when it comes to refitting a modified, in inverted commas, alternator, you're going to bolt your um, wiring loom back to here uh, instead of on the side. Uh, you're going to put this nut back on, that's just um, I guess part of the casing and put that screw back in there and tighten that up. Then finally you can see on here this stud has been shortened. This one hasn't but it could be. There's no reason why you couldn't shorten that down. So what we need to do on this one is shorten that stud and what I might do is take this nut off here and use it as a guide and then um, cover this all up nicely and then grind it off somehow, perhaps. And then I may as well go ahead and grind this one flat as well. So that's the plan and that's all you need to do and hopefully that will give us the clearance that we need. Uh, and it does run fine like that, it's all exposed obviously, but so is this. So doesn't actually stop that much grit and grime getting in there so it's I guess safe to run like that so that's what you need to do to your alternator all right this is Friday afternoon evening four o'clock actually on Friday and um, we're on with the next jobs um, 
one of the jobs we've got to do is to align a kind of breather hole here with the um, inlet manifold of the supercharger. So I've marked up where the hole needs to be on using this gasket. And then we're gonna drill um, a big size drill into there, a few millimeters. And then we're gonna drill at an angle to try and meet up with this hole. And then this hole will eventually be sealed up behind the gasket or we'll use some RTV sealant to block that up. So we need a big drill in there for a few mil and then angle down with a smaller drill to match that up. So that's the next task. <clears throat> so that's the hole drilled and it does line up with this one. So the, the flow from the inlet now joins where this originally goes back up into the top of the engine. So this just needs a bit of sealing over it when we put the gasket back on and that should be good. All right, so we're going for a dry fit of some parts now. We've got this bracket down here, which supports the inlet manifold and holds the additional coolant pump. So that's in place, not fully tightened yet. I think these will be earth points eventually for the loom. Then we spaced off the alternator. This requires an idler pulley. I don't yet know if this arrangement is correct, whether I need this pulley at the top or the bottom. So we'll find out eventually and, and work it out. And obviously there, there's a spacer here that matches the, uh, the idler. And that just needs to tighten it up a bit. So yeah, just get a few things in and we'll just rebuild a little by a little as we go. Okay, so that's the sealant in place, some of this stuff. And cover the hole and then as the gasket goes on, hopefully that'll squash that flat and create the seal. So what we've got here, I'm actually reusing the old gaskets now. Why would I do that? Well, these ones are actually metal. Unfortunately, the ones I got aren't metal. These look to be good all the way around the port, so we should be okay. And I'm gonna try using them. Um, and then we've got this thermal plate between the two that just keeps heat from the engine away from the supercharger and you kind of space off this bracket accordingly because obviously you want the whole inlet to sit off uh, a little bit to compensate for this sandwich plate so that's why the washers are in there so yeah let's get this inlet manifold in place so continuing with a bit of a, a dry fit where we don't actually talk everything up and lock tight everything we're just getting things in situ. You can see the space we have for the alternator and hence why we chop down some of the studs. Um, we've got the supercharger in place and now we're going to test the, the belt run um, to see how good that is and whether it works and whether I've got the right belt and everything. So this is a bit of a moment of truth. I'm going to go get the belt now and see if we can make a run out of it. All right, so we've got the belt on. Now this is using the longer of the two belts I got. There's, a, there's only like a 10 mil difference in the actual length, I think. But it's the longer one. Um, and then remember I was gonna measure the tensioner arm. And if I do, to where we got to the corner of this um, block up here, didn't we? And that is measuring at four and a half inches, so three eighths of an inch difference so far. So technically, if I wanted the arm in the same place, I'd need a longer belt. Now, I think for now, it might be all right. It may stretch a bit and get back to where it should be. Not sure. I'm gonna go for it for now. And, you know, I'm not gonna do any long journeys or anything. If it pops or the belt snaps, then we'll know things are bad, but um, yeah, this, this is the longest belt I've got for this arrangement at the moment, so I think I'm going to have to go with it for now. Um, but yeah, so what we've got is the original tensioner arm, which obviously goes around the crank pulley, which is original, this idler, and then a wrap to the alternator, and the question being, <laughs> excuse me, <laughs> 
question being, is this wrap around the alternator sufficient? It's not quite 90 degrees, it's probably like, I don't know, 78 degrees. Get wrap around there, which again, might not be enough. Um, I think this is one of those situations where we're just gonna have to see what happens really. But at least we've got one belt that should technically work. So I'm pleased about that, and I think what I'm going to do is actually start um, uh, buttoning up some of these things. I need to get back to that bolt, so probably need to pop this belt off and then start to actually lock tight things up. So catch me back in a bit. Okay, so let's catch you up uh, with progress. So all the bolts for the inlet manifold are now torqued up. They're torqued to about 11 newton meters. Uh, these are torqued to 22, bit of a guess on that one, but hopefully that's what it is. We've got the dipstick in, we've got the bolt attaching that in and just tight. Don't really know what the torque is, but I've got it nice and tight. Um, we've got the loom back connected for the alternator and we've got the auxiliary pump for the cooling system of the supercharger. So you can see here the pump feeds out here and goes into the middle. This, uh, this particular supercharger has been modified, so it has a dual pass system, which helps cool things down even better. And then the outlet should go back down towards the radiator. I'm not entirely sure on the piping yet, but I do have diagrams and every time I look at it, I know how it works and then I stop looking at it and I don't know how it works. So <laughs> anyway, we'll figure that out in a minute. We've got the injector rail back in. I didn't need some of the brackets that were on there. It must be for a slightly different engine head or whatever but anyway took some brackets off and that's now bolted in i'm going to get the injector loom fitted before i go too far because it's obviously tight for space um and i have changed the spark plugs now so we've got those ngk platinums fitted in there talked up 20 newton meters uh, we've got the battery tray in with the ecu so i know that that's going to fit so yeah, that's where we are right now. I'm going to carry on, get that loom in, coil pack back on. Uh, we've got this servo brake assister, whatever you want to call it. So this bolts to the air filter side and that goes and plugs into here for the brake pedal assistance, whatever you want to call it. So yeah, that's where we are right now. I'll catch you up in a minute or two. So that was a fun little one. Um, I had the injector rail mounted and then I came to put the plugs on. And the space is so tight that you can't get the plugs on with the injector rail fitted. So I just uh, undid the two screws, lifted the inje injector rail up a bit, fitted the plugs and then pushed the injector rail back down. And those plugs are under a bit of strain, but I guess that's normal. So. That's what I managed to do there and just popped it back in. These things always take a little bit longer than expected as you find these things. So, but yeah. So the injector loom is in. That means I can get the supercharger in place. Uh, the wiring is kind of in. I'm just going to route these things down and around. And then we can get the supercharger on. Of course, don't, uh, don't forget to eat whilst you're doing the supercharger install. Tonight we've got buttermilk chicken. Or butter chicken curry, nice naan bread on rice. This should keep us fueled up for the rest of the evening. Yummy. Okay, we're up at the we're up at the relay box of the vehicle now because we're fitting this new relay, which um, triggers or switches on the um, the water pump, the new water pump for the cooler, charge cooler, and fairly basic. You pick up a couple of earths and and a main live. Uh, permanent life on the battery, fused of course, and then um, the actual pick up the coil for the relay, which is this wire, is going to connect to this red and blue wire. Um, there's like a, a point on the relay where there's two wires, red and a blue, and we're going to solder onto one of them, and then that should trigger the uh, pump when uh, when the engine's running. So I'm just going to splice that in, and then tidy it up a little bit. Right, quick catch up then. So supercharger is installed finally, torqued up and loctited in. Um, we've got this um, 
servo, brake, <laughs> vacuum pipe, whatever it is, reattached. I need to replace that bit of silicon that's kind of acting as a, uh, a clip. We have now got this, it's actually a fuel vent valve. So that's back in place and all the uh, various things are held out the way so they're not going to go in the belt. And that just goes up here to the charcoal box that sits inside the wing. One thing I didn't mention yet was the dipstick. The dipstick is kind of reshaped for um, this whole arrangement. So you're going to need to reshape yours or get one already uh, off a, another vehicle like I did. So those are the things that we've done. Belts back on. Hoping that's going to work. We've got the that auxiliary pump wiring is all in. Looks kind of neat. You can't really tell that I've added something there. So we're getting there. Throttle body, filter and battery and fuel lines reconnection next. Yeah, these fuel lines are a bit tricky. You can see here that the, the run of the line is very close to the supercharger now. So you've got to give it a bit of a, a tweak and a bend out of the way. Um, which we've done. I've seen that on other cars, so that's how it has to be done. But uh, yeah, so a little bit of <laughs> pushing and pulling, you will get it on there. It's not completely tight, you know, it's not rubbing. Well, it is very, very close, and I might put something, a bit of rubber around it or something, I don't know. But yeah, but they're in now, so that's good. We can crack on. Okay, let's do a little catch up starting over here. We've got the uh, secondary coolant header tank over here and it is a bit of a tight squeeze to get the pipe out the back of it so I've used one of those sort of 90 degree silicons and then a joiner and that joins to this pipe that's gonna come down uh, to the rest of the system so that's in we've got this coolant pipe back on I did short on it a bit I might need to shorten it a bit more depends how much this kicks away because obviously we want to make sure there's a gap there uh, I've got the throttle body on, which allowed me to reconnect this pipe and this pipe. I've got this breather pipe here, which connects to the top of the engine. We've got the k and filter in here. Bit of a bit of a twister on here, so I need to straighten out some of those. But yeah, so we're getting there, getting there, and so it's mainly the cooling system now that I'm. Um, needing to work on so we'll get the radiators back in drill some holes for the brackets of the extra cooler and then we'll be getting there alrighty so continuation we've got this coolant pipe reattached with the extension from top of the radiator and you can see that's required to get the um, the route past the belt so that's nice I'm not gonna uh, get rubbing on anything else and we've got the front radiator back in now I do need to find another solution so um, this does fit with the standard radi radiator without modifying any of the radiator I've got no AC pipes but if I use the original brackets that just pushes it off that extra 10 mil and pushes it into the blades. So in true um, let's not show YouTube style, we've tie wrapped <laughs> the radiator in place for the moment. Now, obviously we can't leave it like that. Um, I'm gonna have to find another way of attaching this radiator to there. I um, think what I might do is just get some angle uh, brackets. Now the problem is this radiator um, really could do with being rubberized if you like so damped against the engine just stops any stress fractures coming in I think so yes an angle bracket but then some kind of rubber um, bridge between the bracket and the radiator so I need to think on that and uh, come up with a solution for that um, but we're nearly there, which is, you know, unfortunate. I'm going to have to think of something. Um, I'm trying to think whether, you know, something that I can come back to in a little while and sort out whether that would be sufficient for now. 
that's for me to decide. Um, I'm going to carry on plumbing up. I want to get everything sort of fitted and at least a little test of the system. So I have run out of one because I've done that extra join up there with a 90 degree. I've used up one of my Jubilee clips that I needed. So I need to go and get a couple of Jubilee clips to actually finish the paintwork. So, but next is the crash bar on, uh, or I'll drill the holes that I've marked up in the crash bar for the extra cooler. Then I can mount that, then we can mount the cooler, finish the paintwork, and then we've got to swap the key barrel uh, receiver inside the car. But after that, it's ready for a test fire, I think. I will run through a few things in my head before we do that. Obviously, you need to put some coolant back in before I do a test run, but yeah. That is the plan. So there you go, the extra radiator is in and piped up. So we've got a feed coming in from the header tank that comes along down to this T piece. The other side of the T goes to the pump and obviously this one goes to the bottom of the radiator. The top of the radiator heads off, I think that's a feed back from the uh, cooler itself and obviously the pump feeds into that cooler so pump into the cooler back out the cooler to the top of the radiator um, gets cooled and then flows back into the pump so yeah right so the only thing left is to actually put coolant in I don't know if you can spot the pipe that I didn't order properly but anyway that's coming soon but yeah all we need to do is drop coolant in it now swap the key barrel receiver to match the ECU, put the battery on, and we might be able to give it a test fire, which obviously I'm nervous about, but uh, anyway, we are very close, very close. Let's, let's drop some coolant in and uh, see what happens. So this black ring around the key is essentially a receiver for a transponder chip in the key, and we need to swap this to match the ECU. And to do that we need the key barrel out and I think all we need to do is turn to position two and then there is a hole, I don't know if you'll be able to see it. Um, there is a little hole that you can stick a screwdriver in and that should release a spring mechanism and the key should pop out and then the black piece can follow it too. So let's try that. Right, so that's the key barrel change. You can tell this is from the donor car because it's got the transponder chip glued to it. Um, so I need to take the transponder out of my little key so it doesn't get confused and then we should be good to try and crank it. Obviously I need to reconnect the battery, finish topping up the coolant. So we're very, very close. Well, boys and girls, this is the uh, moment of truth right now. Um, <laughs> a little bit scared, uh, but what's the worst that can happen? I guess fuel leaks. <laughs> so, anyway, <sighs> let's see if it even tries to start or whether our ECU is not quite ready to go yet. <sighs> Here we go. Okay, so the high idle is normal for the supercharger map. We are running. I don't think this pump's running yet though. So I need to investigate that. Got a little bit of a lumpy idle. Not sure why this coolant's not really doing anything either. Oh, right, we've got a belt rubbing through the pipe. We need to stop.
ladies and gentlemen, that's going to be the end of this video. I know it's been a long one, so if you're still here, well done. Um, there's a few things of concern, really. Um, one is there's a bit of a sort of pop-pop noise from this side of the engine. Very hard to describe. I don't know if you could hear it in the videos, but it's kind of there. It comes and goes, so I'm not really sure what that is. I'm going to ask a friend to have a listen to that one. Um, this pipe clearance we've got a slice in the pipe it's not gone through to the braiding of the pipe but the outer rubber on on the black one so probably need to get another one of those radiator mounts obviously you need a bit of a think um, but other than that I'm glad it runs <laughs> we need to give it a drive out but we're not going to do it today because it's soaking wet and then last thing to leave you with is whether or not you like this new grill, so do I'll give you a, a little look away and then back again. So what do you think? Do you think the Ermture grill is better or do you like this one with a little bit of chrome lip? The S for supercharged? What do you think? I'm not sure yet. We'll see if it grows on me. Comments welcome. Right, so the next time you'll have a video will be the first drive of this, which will be a good video. Obviously, we're going to wait for a nice dry day. So, thanks for watching. Hope this has been helpful, and I'm very glad it works so far. All right, see you next time.